interesting. Now, you may have already thought about this, and you're going to go, right, right, right. But I'm just going to try it on you anyway. I think it is fascinating that Steve is leaving at this gracious and amazing time in the life of the church, in the calendar year of the church, the Easter season. This is very beautiful, very beautiful. In the calendar year of every Christian church, people are remembering right now Jesus' last days. Jesus' last days in his ministry, his awareness that he would be leaving, his telling the disciples, you know, I'm going to go. I'm going to be leaving. You guys have some work to do. Get yourself ready. You know, gird your loins. No, greater things than these shall you do. You've got some things to do in the world. <clears throat> the metaphysics of our experience here in Edgework, Edgework, <laughs> whatever we are, Edgewood, Edgewood, I'm sorry, is that a parallel departure occurred thousands of years ago to another group of disciples. If they showed up here this morning, if those men and women, I'm certain, whose names were not written down, <laughs> they sh right? Are you with me on that? Thank you. <clears throat> if they showed up here this morning, I imagine that those disciples would have some advice for us. So your leaders leaving, huh? Here's what they, th I think they would have ideas. I think they would have wisdom for us about how we can create a transition that is rich and conscious with minimal whining. <laughs> That's my goal for myself. I know we will have time together beyond today. There'll be another time, I hope, that I will, I know that I'll be up here on a Sunday morning. But I would like to offer you some questions for your consideration. How would you like to live and grow and transform through this transition? That's not the first question, but that's the guiding question. Let these thoughts be a guideline for your process of traveling through the void. Number one, what do I need? What do I need? When I'm having a feeling, when I'm feeling mad, or I'm feeling sad, or I want to be cranky, or I want to have a tantrum, or I want to whine, or I want to complain, what? do I need right now? So often, I ask myself that, when I remember to ask myself that question, I find that what I need is some tenderness. I need a connection with somebody, you know? I need to just be with somebody who cares about me, somebody I like. I just need something. So what is it that I need? What's driving me in the moment? Secondly, what do I want to give? What do I want to give? You know, at the end of life, and maybe for the disciples too, when somebody is leaving, the question is, wow, they're leaving. I want to make sure I say this. I want to make sure that I give them this memory. I want to... Um, we. I want. I, I want to tell them something important to me, or that they are important to me. What do I need to give? And what do I need to learn? What do I need to learn from this community? What do I need to learn from people who've been through similar transitions? What do I need to learn from Reverend Steve? What do I need to learn from God? What needs to be, this is the fourth question, what needs to be said and done? I see a need. I feel a need. I hear a need. I'm going to take care of that need. You know, obviously through the right channels, through the board, but I'm, I'm a grown-up, and I'm part of this community in this very room. I'm going to talk to the board. I feel a need. I want to feel, help fill that need. Why is Gloria there in that, with the kids every single Sunday since February? I feel a need. So how can I address that need? And finally, what is God doing right in this moment? How is God showing up in this moment Right now, here, Sunday morning, how is God working through this situation? So there's some food for thought kinds of questions, not answers, but questions to ponder, you know? How are we going to do this? I know the church has been through transitions before. What church hasn't? But I bet you no church has been this church. 
No church has ever been this church. And no church, no time has ever been this time. And no group of people has ever been this group of people. So we can create together an amazingly transformative experience for our community together. Moving this through this transition can be an experience that will change not just the church, but our lives, because we can cultivate some new skills here. This can be one of the most transformative experiences we've ever had. <clears throat> I was thinking about how the kind of person, the kind of senior minister that Steve is, and if there is like a, a way that we could think of ourselves and what we are becoming together. And I thought, we are a spiritual family with good bones. <laughs> you know, when I was looking at a house uh, last year, I was looking for a house, and, and that was a phrase that kept coming up. You want a house with good bones. You know, it might need a paint job, it might need new windows, it might need a new furnace, it might, all of the above. But you've got to have the good bones, right? You don't want a house that doesn't have good bones. And you don't want to go to a church that doesn't have good bones. This church, so let's call ourselves the Church of Good Bones. <laughs> but don't tell anybody and don't make a bumper sticker. <laughs> a church with a solid foundation, right? That's what we're talking about. A church with an involved and supportive and informed board. A church with a talented senior minister who never encouraged us to be dependent upon him, but he encouraged us to be self-aware and to learn to do it yourself. Am I right? The development of your own talents, that's what he said, just like Jesus did. We, my friends, can do this. God bless you.